Hello, my friends. We have some of the changes in the Bakhmut city today. Russian forces, or it's better to say Wagner forces, are advancing there from the south part, and they are very close to the central part of the Bakhmut city. And let's go to the timeline. It was yesterday, and it is today. The good news is that it is their first movement since the last week. So if we go to the timeline, before you can see they moved just on 13th of March and now it's 20th of March and we have update from 19th of March and they moved just a couple of quartals towards the city center so it's very hard for them to fight against the Ukrainian resistance in the city itself. But also they got some of the territories of the free land over here it was yesterday and it is today they took this field around here it doesn't change the total picture for the Wagner forces and Ukraine concentrated lots of the resources near to the Chasov Yard, so I am quite okay with the security of this particular place. The most vulnerable area is over here. The distance between the Russian forces is a little bit more than two kilometers. And Prigozhin is frustrated about their own achievements in the Bakhmut city. He said that they should expect the Ukrainian counterattack that may happen in just two weeks in the Bakhmut area if Russian forces would not assist from the flanks so now they're just alone fighting in the Bakhmut city and it's not really true because uh, this is Russian regular army assault regiment of 106 airborne division and also Wagner's backed up by 57 separate motorized rifle brigade but actually yes it's true that Wagner is fighting inside the Bakhmut city and they ask to cover from the flanks by the regular Russian army forces. But regular Russian army mostly sacks, that is why they cannot do anything here, because Ukraine sent more reinforcements to the area and they are unable to move forward from the south or from the north around here. And we are out of the information whether there will be the Ukrainian counterattack in the area or not, but Prigozhin is sure about it, maybe he wants to cover his own mistakes in evaluating the Bakhmut encirclement because around two weeks ago he already had reported about the Bakhmut city being encircled by the Wagner forces but it appears that it's not true. But the big risk of encirclement of Ukrainian forces still exists in a region and that's why I'm very concerned about the place and I told you many times before I would move our forces out from the Bakhmut city but firstly you need to build huge defense lines behind the front lines to make sure that Russian forces or Wagner forces would not move towards Kramatorsk and Slovansk maybe we are doing this job right now and I just give few percent for the Ukrainian counterattack that may happen in nearby time also we have the other hot spot in Avdivka over here Russia moved through Krasnohorivka if we go to the timeline you can see that they took some of the villages and part of this lake around this area but those are regular Russian forces and they move very very slowly even compared to the Wagner forces so this is the end of the February and as you can see they did just a minor success throughout the recent months. And Ukraine continued to trade its territory for the time. We need to win the time before we get the massive shipment of the military from our western allies, armored vehicles, more artillery shells and obviously MiG-29 fighter jets. Without those it's not possible to start the counterattack. But we're gonna start it. It's gonna happen in May, I think. And remember that the same scenario was played in Severodonetsk and Lysychansk Chansk, then Russia slowly advanced towards those two cities and took this territory under their control and just in a few weeks Ukraine started the counterattack in Kharkiv region taking the vast territory. Russian forces were so concentrated on Severodonetsk and Lysychansk that they lost the situational awareness and led Ukrainian to liberate the vast territory capturing lots of the Russian soldiers and also the armored vehicles, especially tanks. 
The similar scenario could have happened with hair sewn, but it was much harder to liberate this area. Uh, those areas, it was a real fighting and Russia resisted there. But finally, Russia performed the goodwill gesture, trying to save their forces and moved away from the hair sewn destroying all of the bridges across the Dnieper river. And even if someday they take Bakhmut, it's still uncomparable achievement compared to the loss of the Kherson and this area that they have did just because of the single decision, not even fighting really for this particular area. I am not speaking about uh, those flanks where they were fighting very hard. So for this day, I am quite optimistic about what is happening on the front lines and Ukraine still has the strategic advantage over the Russian forces. Russian forces are really slow in their achievements on the front lines and they waste their crucial resource, the human resource. And yes, now they start to hire more people to the Russian army and also for the Wagner army, but still they need time for preparation and in the best case scenario they may advance maybe during the late summer. And speaking about the advertised military campaign, the huge Russian assault that we have seen in the Western media and also in the Russian propaganda media, it simply hadn't happened because Russia is in lack of resources. Yes, the biggest country with lots of the natural resources because of the lack of the management, because this war wasn't really planned, they are now in a deep shit. And our artillery works hard in the Bahmut area. For example, this building was used by the Russian soldiers basically as barracks and they were lucky actually to leave the place just before it was destroyed. And I cannot post those videos on my YouTube channel, but for that please check out my Telegram channel that is always available with the link in the video description below or you may just check out the QR code, I'll put it somewhere here on the screen. My friends, we have lots of the subscribers on my Telegram, so I highly recommend you to join it. It's the backup source if someday I lose YouTube. I post there each day, so if you want to be updated for the current news, join my Telegram channel. For example, there you may also find the unique video of the K-52 shutdown and the ejection process with lots of the smoke and rotor blade separation. This Russian helicopter is unique because of the ejection feature and sometimes it even works. And that is the K-52 on the ground, a little bit modified by Ukrainian army. Putin attended the Mariupol today and it was his first visit close to the front lines. Well, actually Mariupol is far away and we cannot use HIMARS rocket artillery systems to fire on that particular place because we are simply in lack of the long-range missiles and it was filmed near to the new building that Russia built over there. Firstly, they destroyed all of the buildings with civilians and now they have took some of the civilians near to the new building and claimed that everything is okay, their lives changed for good. This is for sure the complete nonsense and Russia should be prosecuted and Putin himself should be prosecuted for what he's done in Ukraine. Today the Polish ambassador in France said that if Ukraine loses the war, Poland will fight against Russia. They have no other choice. But I didn't post those news because he's just a Polish ambassador in France. He's official but not really high ranked and now official Poland said that the words of the ambassador were not understood correctly and taken out from the context. So that is why it's not a big news. What I might say that Poland will not have to fight against Russia because Ukraine will never lose and Polish people, thank you so much for your kind support and also for the MiG-29 fighter jets to Ukrainian Air Force. Stay awesome! Today Russians found a drone in Tursk Oblast. It is far away from the Ukrainian border and it's the flying wing design and I don't think it might have carried some sort of the explosions. I think it was the surveillance drone and it's quite light has I think the engine on the front, the propeller, because for sure there is no engine behind the drone. Maybe it was used as the surveillance drone 
it has no marking nothing and really it's kind of the small drone to carry the explosives today german officials say that they will arrest putin if he would step on the german territory someday Germany became the first country that officially said that they will implement the decision of the International Court under the proper circumstances. And today it was the interesting video released by Ukrainian army. So here you can see the Bayraktar TB2 drone that was partially intercepted by the Russian Sukhoi Su-27 airplane over, I think, the Black Sea because below you have lots of the water. The altitude is quite high, 20,000 feet, but the speed is quite slow. Well, this is actually the slow drone, I might say, compared to the United States made like Reaper or Global Hawk. So what this airplane created there is the wake turbulence and you'll see what will happen to the drone after it entered this uh, wake turbulence so it uh, lost the control the camera is shaking the signal is kind of the bad but we can see the attitude uh, differs from the pitch down to minus 40 up to well, minus 55 but after all this drone became controllable and we saved this drone so this is what happened after we lost around 2000 feet and it was terrible experience for the drone operator because this is very expensive toy and actually i have some of the friends who are flying this particular toy i wonder why the russian jet hadn't shut down the drone probably it was unaware that it is the ukrainian bayraktar or something it is actually a good thing for us we need more russian pilots like that stupid and brave awesome news from the united states john kirby said that they will give something to ukraine that is crucially and life important for the ukrainian army in the next few weeks or months well it's kind of intriguing what should we expect uh, from the united states maybe long-range missiles who knows yeah a few words about the putin's visit to mariupol this guy attended mariupol as well in 1941 but he and his forces hadn't stayed in mariupol for a very long time my friends now press the like to this video and if you want to support my job there are some of the links available in the video description just below and my special thanks for the sponsors of my channel and also for supporters on patreon guys thank you so much for your support i wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time